and I have been doing ski base together for a few years now. So we've we've opened a few exits. This was the second or third ski base jump that we've done together. Yeah. The, rock, the rocks are in line. For that. Okay, I'm going. It's always good to have somebody with you doing it. Not not in just in terms of safety, but the stoke. Yeah. It's always good to share a moment like that. So this particular ski base, uh, it was in Chamonix. And there's a glacier that goes all the way up from a little town called Argentia. So it's the Argentia Glacier that we're landing on. Out of all the ski base jumps that I've done, it's been my most favorite. The feeling between a normal base jump and a, and a ski base is just so different. Ski base always gets me going, always gets me peaking. You know, the, the commitment is like a split second. See you down there. Um, but in a ski base, the commitment is the whole run in, you know? and you go three, two, one, and that's it, you, you're gone. That, in that split second, there's no turning back. I did a ski base once in France, and a friend of mine slipped up on the exit point, and I was just like, ah, that's him, finished. I, I don't know what's gonna happen to this dude. And he, and he literally stopped with his skis hanging off the edge. On this particular jump, it was, yeah, real smooth, real nice. And you, you need to pick how fast you're going, you need to make sure that you're steady on the skis, you need to make sure they exit, and you're gonna exit properly with a good trajectory, good angle. And on top of that, you're getting so much speed, and then under canopy, you've got the skis on your feet, and you've got this awesome landing. You just hope that you don't land in a crevasse because you're on top of a dry glacier. It's a big step from, from normal base jumping to do a ski base, but it's a, it's a different step. It's not like progression of base maybe, because skiing isn't a progression of base. Skiing is a completely different sport. You have to do some pretty decent off-piece skiing to get down onto the glacier, and you've got to cross the glacier. You're skiing above the cliff. As the cliff gets bigger and bigger, you're skiing on top of it. So you make any mistakes and you're falling off this cliff. Now you've got to get out of it, you know? You've got, to, you've got to figure out how to get off this glacier. And I think if you don't have the skills, you know, the mountaineering experience and stuff like that, things can go wrong. This is really nice skiing. This is fucking beautiful skiing. So skiing in itself, you know, I love it. And when you're skiing towards the edge of a 150 meter cliff, you know, not many people get to experience that. It's flying off. You know, I don't know how fast we're going, but you can pick up some speed, 30, 40 miles an hour, whatever, uh, and just flying off this cliff. And like, you're in this hang time, because you, you're getting momentum away from the cliff. You're not just falling straight down, you're going away and then falling. It's just, yeah, pretty, <laughs> pretty cool experience. Getting separation from the cliff in a ski base is preferable, because you're gonna be further away from the edge of the cliff if you have any 180s or, you know, it's, it's going to be, you're going to be further away from, from, from a cliff strike, so it's a good thing. As soon as I opened, I looked behind and I saw her, a canopy open as well, and it's, yeah, awesome feeling. Yeah, so I've got, I've got a blog that I write about bits and pieces like this, um, Instagram and on Facebook, and it's just all Tim Howe Adventure, so... Check out more stuff if you want.